Good morning, welcome to another Againis Projects video. Today we are going to be changing the compressor, the accumulator dryer, the orifice tube, and whatnot on this truck. This is my dad's truck. Welcome in my dad. What truck is this? It's a 1997 GMC Dually, one ton, four wheel drive, 454. So this is a 134A system. So, like I said, placing the compressor, uh, he had a leak previously on his high side on the uh, Schrader valve, so we're gonna replace those. We're gonna replace the dryer and the orifice tube, which is of course in the most pain in the butt place to get to way back there behind the headlight. So stay tuned, we'll show you how. Okay, as far as the accumulator dryer goes, you just take your electrical off. Keep that somewhere where you can find it later. Uh, we're gonna put this on the new one as well, so make sure you save that. Okay, so once you get your lines broken loose, your accumulator's gonna be held in by a bracket down here. Okay, that is your old dryer accumulator. And it's completely taken off, whatever you think. It's probably just pop out, just get rid of it. If we're gonna try it that way. There we go, I just had to push it down. Uh, Yellow okay. to the inside. So we're gonna get rid of this headlight housing. There we go. Just push on the tab, twist. Gotta push it down. Uh, oh, they're both yellow, okay. And push them down. Yeah, so. Right. And then we have left, that out of our way. Left and right is obvious if we don't cross the wires. Okay. Now we should have access to our orifice tube, which is going to be right here. Uh, it's going to be a bit hard to get to, but what on a vehicle isn't? So, carry on. Okay, so replace the compressor. You're going to have to take the belt off. Just stick your wrench in the tensioner. Get your partner to pull on it. If you need to do it yourself, you can. And it just picks up right over. Hang it on the fan blade so you don't have to do the whole thing. And let her go. Now your compressor's free. What's the half equivalent? 13. Okay, so you're gonna get your 13 millimeter. You're gonna bust these four bolts loose. And this should just pop off. And grab your electrical connector, pull it off. So this one, we're gonna reach in here, you're gonna pop this tab off. Somehow, without breaking it. Once you get it released, it should just pull right out. Just like that. There we go. So now that can move out of your way, you can finish unbolting your compressor. And your whole compressor assembly should pull. Uh, Got to take that electrical off the back end too, apparently. Okay. This one you just push and pull, and there you go. Okay, as far as your compressors go, this is our new one. It's a Murray. This is the one that was switched out last time. It is not OEM. Uh, this little switch on the back right here, there's a snap ring. You're just going to grab the snap ring, boop, boop, pop it out. Pop it out over here where there's a plug. And you're just going to take the switch and switch them. What do you know? Okay, there's that one. And make it look like a master, just like that. Missed it on the film. But this just pulls straight out after some wiggling and some muscle. Go for it. Okay. Well, a little bit of wiggling with a screwdriver on the inside lip, I was able to wiggle that out. Now you just gotta put the one from your old compressor in over here. Put your little C clamp put it back in, and then you're good to go. E clip, yeah. Make sure yeah. that's cleaned yeah, up before it goes back. Yeah, it's pretty in. dirty, so we'll clean it. All right, so that's cleaned up. So before you put that in, you want to lube up the O-ring. We're just going to use some of that Pag 150 oil, which is what we're putting in the uh. system. Without dropping the wrapper. So I guess I'll just put a little on my finger, put it on the O-ring. It should be sufficient, right? Yep. Just enough to moisten it. Okay. 
Just gotta get past that O-ring. There we go. Alright, and the clip. Oh, that was the old one, okay. It's as easy as that. Just make sure it's sealed so we don't lose it. Looks good. Okay, so once your compressor's good to go, you plugged in the uh, switch in the back. Not that you can see it anymore. You want to bolt it back in. I do not know the torque specs on this, but just do it to about one grunt. Three quarters of a grunt, somewhere in there. I would not do two grunts. I didn't grunt, so I keep going? Yep, till you grunt. <laughs> And while we're here, we'll go ahead and put the belt on. That'll allow you to leave in a hurry if we have to for any reason. I don't know why you would, but the truck is transportable after you put that belt back on. So we might as well do it now. Belt goes back on the exact same way it came off. And if you're smart, you looped it up against something so you wouldn't have to re-thread the whole thing. Ready? Yep. Just gonna slide the belt right back over. You're gonna make sure your belt is on all your pulleys. You're gonna trust your partner to not let it go while your fingers are in there. And we should be good. Okay, release the tension. And your belt should be back on just like it was before. Okay, now you gotta put your electrical connectors back in. Uh, you want that on before you put it on there uh, or no, after? Let's wait on that one. Okay. Okay, full. So for your orifice tube, it's gonna be down here in this lower pipe. Uh, we took this headlamp out, assembly out, so it's easier, so the grill stays in. Uh, get your vice grips on that lower nut so you don't break nothing. Grab your channel locks or whatever you happen to have that you haven't lost yet, you just break it loose. And cramp spaces, big tools, so slow going, but it's worth doing. Just gonna grab this pipe. Hopefully, you have enough room to pull it apart. You do. Fantastic. So now with the grill nut off, it's gonna make getting that orifice tube out a little bit interesting, but I think we're doable. Some needle nose pliers. Okay, so now important to note. Can you see from there? Yeah. I can see from here. Yeah, you're good. Uh, if you're doing this and you try to get this orifice tube out and it does not come out easy, you will break it. They have a specialized tool for it other than needle nose. If you don't want to buy one, just get some of that new oil, dump it in there and let it soak for a little bit. Uh, we're going to try first without doing that though. Just reach in there. Oh yeah, that was easy enough. You just pull it out. Now remember which way it came out so you can put it back in the correct way. So this is your orifice tube. Your refrigerant is going through this system and this is what's separating essentially your low side from your high side. Uh, it kind of acts as a filter as well and as you can see it has definitely filtered some crap out. Uh, the metal shavings on there tell you that your compressor has been shedding some metal and it's been going through the system or the last time you had it changed out they didn't flush it well enough and this is uh, collecting that. That's going to decrease your performance of your AC because now your refrigerant cannot flow as designed. So, so between that and the leak I had, it explains why it doesn't work. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. So that's that. For comparison, let's go grab the new one. Okay, so this is the old one, all clogged up, nasty metal shavings on it. This is the new one, see-through. What do you know? So yes, worth changing out, absolutely. Okay, so for all of your o-rings that are exposed, you might as well replace them. And camera always difficult. So just pull off the old ones, match it up with a new one. Okay, so you can either dunk this o-ring in the oil ahead of time, or you can do it after your choice. I'm trying to do this so the camera can see. So there's that. Now you're gonna get your new orifice tube. So 
this, you're also going to coat in oil. You don't have to go crazy, just enough to make it nice and all slippery. Especially on that O-ring. This is PAG 150, which is super thick. Thank you. Okay, and that's going to just slide back in just like it came out. If I can get two hands in there. Two hands and a camera makes it difficult. Oh my, put mine in there to help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be helpful. Okay, once it goes in there, you do not want to shove this in. You just want to seat it. Once it's seat, once it's seated, it's seated. You do want it to go all the way until it's seated. If not, the refrigerant is going to bypass it and you're going to defeat the whole purpose of the system. And of course, we don't want to defeat the purpose of the system. Screw your nuts back together. No dirty jokes, please. And then you just tighten her back up. If you have to use your vice grips, use them. some oil into the compressor so now we're going to take the old rings off because the new compressor came with new rings one. Okay. take those off your new compressor should have new ones you're going to clean this off before you put the new rings on all right, you're gonna put your washer in. Okay. Put this on. Now you can drop it into place. Put your bolt back in. Again, I don't know what the torque specs are. So you're just gonna go until it's tight. And then just a wee bit more for good measure. And you're good. And if you're not, you'll know when everything sprays all over the place. Okay, so now we're going to put our valves back in. I already put that one on off camera. Uh, so we're gonna put this Schrader back in. Put your Schrader back in. You do not wanna crank that down, you just want it tight that's it okay so now we know we got two ounces of refrigerant in here this particular truck is going to take eight for refrigerant sorry got two ounces of oil in this compressor uh, so we're going to add the other six into the accumulator and there it will spread through the system from there so that's what we're going to do next get your measuring cup i'm just going to put it in it is important to note that when you do plug it into your dry, or, uh, accumulator You've got these two ports, you're going to pour it in, the one that does not have a tube going into it. This one right here, you can kind of see through here, there's a tube in this one that goes down to the bottom, and it's got just a little hole in it. You're going to pour your oil in here so it doesn't all clog up the tube on this one. This is just drops down to the bottom of the canister where all the desiccant and whatnot is. So, I'm just going to put six ounces in there. Oil's all the way on the bottom. Here it comes. Nope. Here, went, here went the foil I dropped in there. Get out any debris that may have happened to fall in there, like your wrapper when you open the container. Okay, at least now I know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So you're going to measure out your ounces, and your truck or your vehicle may be a different amount, so don't just put in what I said. Look it up. We're going to dump it in. If you drink this, you may or may not become the Hulk. Try it at your own discretion. 
if you do and you do become the Hulk, let me know. So now this is gonna go back right where you found it. Now if you're using a UV dye oil and you're getting it everywhere, you're gonna to wanna to clean that up as you go because then if you're looking for leaks later, it's gonna keep scaring you because you think you have one. But if you do this right, you'll never have a leak. You're gonna come back up here, just make sure all your electrical's plugged in and we're about done, guys. So at this point, everything's plugged back in, the orifice tube is back in, the dryer's back in, your Schraders are back in, your compressor's back in, your belt's back on. So now what we gotta do is vacuum the system out. If you don't have that set up, please go to your local mechanic that does. They'll vacuum out your system. They'll tell you if you have a leak. Uh, you can either pay them to fix the leak if you do or do it yourself, don't care, that's your problem. Uh, however, after it's vacuumed, you'll know if there's it's a sealed system or not. You can then have them fill it up or fill it up yourself if you have the know-how and ability uh, and legality. But yeah, we're gonna vacuum it out right now. And as soon as you start vacuuming, within 10 minutes, you'll know if you have a leak or not. All right, we are in the truck now doing a test drive. It feels nice in here. We've just put in about 10 miles. And it feels good. AC's blowing cold. Got a happy customer, I think, if it gives us a thumbs up. Yep, happy customer. So one dumb thing to watch out for that may have made a mistake on was we got to put the switch back on on that receiver dryer and uh, racking our brains, knocking my head, trying to figure out why the heck the compressor wouldn't turn on. A stupid mistake like that can make things really frustrating. So always remember to make sure you put everything back just the way you found it. Uh, quick tip, save yourself some trouble and frustration. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe so you can see more. Don't forget that little bell thingy so that you know when I post another video. Uh, I do all kinds of videos as far as repairs, installs, improvements on the house, the cars, my cars, other people's cars, other people's houses, my houses, whatnot. Anything I do, I pretty much try to video for y'all. So yeah, I'll see you on the next one.